serious, hello scientists of Reddit, what's a scary science fact that the public knows nothing about? I've got three for you, one, rabies. Once symptomatic, rabies has a 100% fatality rate. The only options are the rabies vaccine, and immunoglobulin therapy, which, again, must be administered before any symptoms. 2. Gamma ray bursts, henceforth referred to as GRBs. GRBs are a rare phenomenon emitted from the poles of rapidly spinning supernova, and hypernova. In the event of a direct hit from suitably close, which is actually really, really far, all life on Earth would be wiped out. The facing side would be annihilated instantly, while the trailing side would quickly die due to the conditions on Earth no longer being suitable to support life. And there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. 3. Runaway Global Warming There are many stores of greenhouse gases, namely carbon dioxide, and methane, all over the place. But the conditions required to keep these gases trapped are delicate. The worst part? It may already be too late to stop, even if humanity immediately ceased all greenhouse gas emissions, and put every single resource we have into carbon sequestration. Some forms of anesthesia don't numb you to pain they make you forget that you felt it. Scientific literature conclusion on Alzheimer's disease, and other neurodegenerative diseases in general is that the diseases start decades before the first obvious symptoms, and that we need to treat them at this stage. When you exhibit obvious symptoms, it's too late, your brain is already mush. If you get diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 65, you had the disease since your early 40s at least. And you experienced very mild symptoms but didn't notice it. And your brain fought like hell to compensate the deficit. When you get diagnosed, your brain is already very severely damaged, and will never recover from the deficit. If your dog swims in a lake after receiving a spot-on flea treatment, it absolutely decimates the invertebrate population. A large dog swimming in eight Olympic swimming pools worth of water soon after treatment will leach enough neurotoxin to kill 50% of the lake's invertebrate population within 48 hours. There's some awareness of this, but it's not being taken seriously enough. Edit, I need to add. When I say after I mean relatively soon after, within say a day, to have an effect quite this devastating. The leaching does reduce over the month, but it's still there, and the effect of multiple dogs still allows for a terrible buildup of chemicals. Prions. Misfolded proteins that cause a cascade of protein misfoldings that lead to amyloid plaque buildups, resulting in uncontrollable neurodegeneration that is fatal in 100% of cases within two years. There is no cure. We don't understand what causes it. We don't understand the mechanism of the misfolding cascade. We don't even fully understand the structure of the misfolded proteins. It could in theory happen to anyone, at any time, and there's no way to tell until you start showing symptoms, at which point you might have 18 months to live, if you're lucky, the last six of which will be intensely unpleasant. Small asteroids are hard to detect, but can still cause massive damage to towns. Coronavirus slash COVID-19 was not surprising nor unexpected by people working in public health. And it's not the worst case scenario by any means. Ironically, the success of public health has been so dramatic over the past 150 years, that politicians, and the general public forget how important it is. And how much authority government officials have in a public health crisis. Antibiotics has been abused, and misused for so long, that various bacteria strains have started to get resistance to them. What used to be a treatable infection, might soon become deadly because we are unable to treat it with the antibiotics we have today. There is research to try, and find other ways to treat antibiotic-resistant bacteria, but until then, please use prescribed antibiotics until they are finished, not until you feel better, if unused do not flush them down the toilet or put them in the bin, give it to a pharmacy so they can discard them correctly, and use antibiotics when necessary, some countries give them willy-nilly while others are more conservative. Everyone knows about scurvy, but the reason it's so terrifying is usually less now. You see scar tissue is not permanent, the process to build, and maintain scar tissue is constantly ongoing. When you become vitamin C deficient your scar tissue starts being reabsorbed by your body. Opening up any, and all old wounds. If you have ever had surgery those internal incisions will open back up. Fortunately it doesn't take a lot of vitamin C, and it's abundant in our food sources but it's still a little creepy that you could just start falling apart without it. Edit, FYI too much vitamin C can lead to stomach cancer. Vitamin C is basically citric acid, so eating a ton of acid regularly is bad. Helium. Fun for party balloons. Everybody likes a squeaky voice. Except helium is a vital component of various high-tech devices such as MRIs. Helium is also light enough that the Earth's gravity cannot contain it. 
and we are running out. Not today, not tomorrow, but we are frivolously wasting it when we should be jealously hoarding it, and eventually we won't have any left, and a lot of our wonderful technology will suddenly stop working. There is a gravitational anomaly in space called the Great Attractor which is pulling everything within the Virgo and Hydrus and Taurus superclusters towards it. It lies 150 to 250 million light years from the Milky Way, which itself is being pulled towards it too. The scary part is that relative to us, this anomaly lies within the same plane as our own galaxy making it very difficult to observe. Essentially, we have almost no concrete idea of what it is. On the flip side of the Great Attractor is the Boötes Void, which I find a bit creepy. The Boötes Void, sometimes called the Great Void, is a huge, spherical region of space that contains very few galaxies. It's approximately 700 million light years from Earth, and located near the constellation Boötes, which is how it got its name. The Super Void measures 250 million light years in diameter, representing approximately 0.27% of the diameter of the observable universe, which itself is a daunting 93 billion light years across. Its volume is estimated at 236,000 mcp3, making it the largest known void in the universe. At first, astronomers were only able to find 8 galaxies across the expanse, but further observations revealed a total of 60 galaxies. Now, while that might still seem like a lot, it would be like stumbling upon only 60 objects across a region larger than the continental United States, and that's just in two dimensions. According to astronomer Greg Aldering, the scale of the void is such that, if the Milky Way had been in the center of the Boötes Void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s. Looking at the volume of the Boötes Void, it should contain about 10,000 galaxies, when considering that the average distance between galaxies elsewhere in the universe is a few million light years. But the question is, why, and how this void came to be? There hasn't been enough time since the universe began for mere gravitational forces to clear out a space of that size. There's a theory which suggests that supervoids are caused by the intermingling of smaller mini-voids, like soap bubbles coming together, but a more, maybe creepier, explanation is that the Boötes void could be the result of an expanding Kardashev three-scale civilization. As the colonization bubble expands outward from its home system, the civilization dims each star, and subsequently each galaxy, it encounters by blanketing it in a Dyson shell. This might also explain why the void has such a nice, spherical shape. Oh and we're seeing a snapshot of the void 700 million years ago. A lot could have happened in 700 million years that we just cannot see slash know due to the inherent speed of light. Sweet dreams, everyone. If you live in the Netherlands, and your house is older than let's say 100 years, and you have not renovated your pluming, chances are fairly high that you can get lead poisoning. It is impossible for water treatment companies to pinpoint where they are, and how many, and many building plans do not include the plumbing schematics. So check your pipes for lead, they can do harm, especially to children. The entire explosive output from little boy, the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima, came from just over half a gram of matter being converted into energy. The mass of the butterfly exploding with the force of 15,000 tons of DNT. Cancer geneticist here. Most cases of cancer that are sequenced generally just denote the prognosis or how long a patient has to live, rather than treatment options. People always say let's cure cancer however this simplifies cancer as though it is only one disease. It's far more complicated than that. I studied at one of the largest cancer hospitals in the world where the motto is to make cancer history, but the only obtainable goal is to make it chronic. We study, and research as much as possible but every cancer requires different research, and unfortunately the powers that be often prohibit funding and proficient research. It's work I am passionate about, but also a broken system that is infuriating to work in. During World War II when America was working on the first nuclear bombs, they hadn't finalized the maths on whether, or not a nuclear explosion would cause an ongoing reaction with the atmosphere, thereby igniting it and eradicating Earth. There is a forest of trees that are all genetically identical, and connected at the roots, and is considered the largest organism on Earth. I'm pretty sure it was the inspiration behind Eva in Avatar. In the UK, about 17% of people have fetal alcohol syndrome, Maguire et al. 1992. As much as 17% of us are developmentally disabled simply because, prior to the late 90s, a large proportion of British mothers drank during pregnancy, 41%. Thankfully the prevalence rate has been falling fast since the late 90s when all this research was published, but it's terrifying to see how much of an effect FOST is having on society. A repeat of an earlier post but damned as it fits so well, the original nuclear bombs leveled the cities they detonated over 
yet are considered puny by today's standards. The most powerful nuclear bomb ever created, the Tsar bomb, had an explosive yield 3,000 times more powerful than the original nuclear bombs, and its power was calculated to be more than 10 times the combined power of every single munition used in World War II. That includes every bullet fired, every grenade thrown, every artillery shell fired, every bomb dropped, and of course, the two nuclear bombs dropped. It was detonated 4 kilometers from the ground over the remote Severny Island yet still completely destroyed towns within a couple hundred kilometers of the blast, and broke windows as far away as Copenhagen, Denmark. The shockwave from the blast circled the globe nine times. The plane that dropped it was given a 50-50 chance of survival. Yet, the bomb was originally designed to be twice as powerful. Edited to add further clarification. Edit 2, thanks for all the upvotes folks. Topsoil loss is pretty scary for the medium long term. This glosses over heterogeneity for example were burning through soil in the Midwest much faster than other parts of the US. Interestingly enough a lot of the damage from the dust bowl is still in place, but we're relying on more input intensive methods to eke out results. Fertilizer runoff is also causing a giant anoxic dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, the nutrients feed algae, which has a population explosion and rots on mass. Some are holding out for usable soil opening up at high latitudes, for example Canada, Siberia, with climate change, but at least near term that isn't too promising given that it will generally be poorer soil, for example less phosphate, and melting permafrost won't be too reliable for quite a while. While vertical farming and the like is making advances, as I understand it most of what's practical to grow tends to be inefficient calorie-wise. The human genome is riddled with mutations. Some were passed down from your parents. Some occur during DNA replication and others as a result of DNA damage from the environment, smoking, UV light, etc. Most of the these mutations are harmless, some will be repaired, some won't. But others will be in cancer suppressor genes or oncogenes. In fact, you may have cancerous cells growing in your body right now. Soil science adjacent researcher here. We are degrading, polluting, and losing our topsoil at such a rate that we may not be able to produce enough food to feed everyone within 50 to 60 years, let alone what impacts climate change may bring to bear on our food supply. And the US government's crop insurance programs, and incentives all reinforce the bad practices, while discouraging regenerative practices. These bad policies are extremely hard to change because of lobbying from the major agribusiness companies, who make money off of these short-sighted policies. Our food supply is further threatened by our agricultural overdependence on aquifer water, which is not being replenished, making it an unsustainable source of water. If the aquifers are overdrawn, depleted, or polluted, we hit a hard wall of water scarcity, and we will have no backups to address the problem with. The drawdown of the aquifers also causes land subsidence, which causes costly infrastructure, and building damage. The general public does not realize the impending crisis that will be caused by the confluence of these factors. The Cascadia Subduction Zone CSZ, runs off the coast of Northern California to Southern Canada, and ruptures about every 250 to 350 years. We know this from the geologic record. The last rupture was in January 1700, and there are written records from Japan of a tsunami that resulted from the earthquake on the other side of the Pacific. This zone is still active, and is likely to rupture in the next 100 years resulting in a Mag 9 plus earthquake that impacts the west coast from Northern Cali to Southern Canada. Edit, these massive earthquakes along subduction zones are called megathrust earthquakes. There's a solar event known as a CME, or a coronal mass ejection. It occurs very frequently on a cosmic timescale. Every few decades to centuries there's a decent size one. Why are they scary? A CME is a massive burst of radiation, easily able to fully envelope the Earth in its path, and it's the equivalent of a non-stop EMP barrage. The last time a big one hit Earth, was when we had telegraph lines for communications, and they spontaneously caught fire. In today's world, with everything running on electricity, when the next big one hits we'll have at most a few days warning, and it'd be a literal apocalypse movie scenario, with planes going down due to their whole electrical system frying, nobody's vehicle starting, untold billions in fire damage would wreak havoc everywhere, and the machines we depend on to help would be similarly fried. Some stuff would be unaffected, being parked in deep, concrete roofed parking garages and the like but our entire infrastructure would be useless for years, it'd literally send us into a mini dark age while people tried to get things working again. Recovery would take decades to centuries. The mortality rate of COVID-19 is much talked about with lots of different numbers thrown about, but with a few exceptions I think we can agree that it is less than 
and less than half of that for healthy people. The typical mortality rate for the Marburg virus is 50%. Different variants can be as high as 80%. We have known about this virus for many years and yet there is still no vaccine. The only good news is that it is too effective at killing to reach pandemic levels. Haven't seen this one yet, insects are going extinct. We have lost a significant chunk just since the 80s. I think it was around 20%. Mozzies are going up, because of course, but just about everything else is going. Wasn't until I read this that I realized that as a kid in the 90s I used to see butterflies all the time. Dragonflies. My house used to get invaded by Christmas beetles every year. Not so much. These days I might see only one or two Christmas beetles in December, if any at all. When I was a kid I remember finding eight in my house in a single night. Same house. Botox is made from botulinum toxin. This toxin is produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum, and is considered to be one of the most poisonous, lethal substances known to mankind. The toxin is a neurotoxin that blocks nerve signals to muscles. Consequently, it prevents muscles injected with Botox from contracting, tensing, so they become weak or paralyzed, thus improving the appearance of wrinkles, and fine lines. Fortunately though, Botox is only injected in small, targeted doses, and is considered extremely safe as long as it's made, and provided by a licensed professional. <laughs>